I'm Mark Bassingthwaite. I'm the risk manager with Alps, and welcome to another episode of Alps in Brief. I am uh, sitting in the corporate office here in the beautiful Florence building in downtown Missoula, Montana, and I am so pleased to have as my guest uh, this morning uh, Ida Abbott. And Ida is from the uh, Oakland area in California and has done uh, some interesting work in mentoring and and sponsoring and has done some writing uh, on the topic. But before we uh, talk about some of the issues that have been so important and that you've been working on, Ida, can you take just a brief moment and, and tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, your background. Sure, and thank you. It's really nice to be uh, talking with you, Mark. Um, I uh, am a lawyer. I practiced uh, as a litigator at a large firm for about 20 years and uh, left there and started a consulting business that's uh, been about the same amount of time. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, I've been doing um, work in the area of legal talent management uh, lawyers' professional development and and career development. Um, I specialize in mentoring and sponsorship, and um, also now I'm doing a lot of work helping lawyers transition into retirement and ha- uh, helping firms develop ways to ease that transition. Interesting and, and very, very important stuff. Uh, one of the things that I've been fascinated by, and, and I'll be honest and say in, in my 20 years uh, in terms of uh, working in risk management uh, uh, with, with lawyers here, I've really not come across this whole notion of sponsorship. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about what this is all about, uh, the, the work you're doing here? Sure. And the reason you haven't heard about it is because it's a relatively new concept, um, in fact, let's let's start with what mentorship is, okay. and then we can distinguish them. Uh, a mentor is, uh, first of all, mentoring today is much more collaborative, yes, uh, where both parties are involved and and learn from each other and help each other. But traditionally, you know, mentor a mentor was somebody who was older and wiser and more experienced, took you under his wing, helped teach you the ropes, you know, understand what the profession was about. Um, how to be a lawyer, uh, what it meant, um, what it meant to be a professional, uh, made introductions, and basically helped you in any number of ways in the course of your career. And um, the old-fashioned, that was sort of the old-fashioned concept right. of yes. mentor. And um, what happened in really in the 50s and 60s, uh, last century, was people started to study organizations and realized that there was a role for this within an organization. So they started promoting mentoring and started mentoring programs. And in the law, mentoring programs became popular in the 90s and and as the uh, 2000s, uh, as we moved into the 2000s. And because a program necessarily is, is bringing people together in a way that's uh, not the same if you and I were working together informally, you would, as my as a supervisor, you might give me the kind of work and the kind of feedback and support that would help me learn and develop. Right, exactly. But when we're matched in a program, then necessarily, you know, there are some expectations within the program. The relationship, we may know each other to begin with, or we may never have met before. And so... Uh, you've got a much narrower range of activities that are expected, and it kind of diluted the concept of mentoring into okay. something that was more programmatic. Right. Then, uh, and, and what actually happened was because people were being matched, and anybody could be matched you know, as a mentor, as long as I had a little more knowledge and experience than you, I could be your mentor. Um but what it meant was that the kind of mentoring that actually helps you move ahead, that moves you, get you a promotion or a raise or uh, an appointment to an important committee or an introduction to somebody, you know, to a critical client, that kind of mentoring was usually not within the scope of a program. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so people had to rely on it to happen informally. And as organizations got bigger and mentoring was seen in a narrower way, 
uh, people started to wonder what was happening. And when they studied this, and it was only about five or six years ago that the first research was done on this, um, they found that what was happening was that men uh, were being sponsored. They gave it a new term, this idea of helping somebody advance in their career as opposed to develop professional skills and understanding. Um, that kind of mentoring was not happening for women. Okay, got it. Okay. And so they called that aspect of it, the advancement piece, they called, or the advocacy piece, uh, they called that sponsorship. Okay. And so, that's why we've been talking about it as something different. I see it as the high end of the continuum, but a lot of people might talk about it as something separate. It's, it, it's interesting. What I hear and what I like about this is, you know, again, the, the old school model, if you will, on mentoring is, you know, helping even just, you know, I think of the rural attorney in, uh, you know, just trying to hang up a shingle out of law school and you find somebody else to help educate, get you started, teach you the basics. But what you're really talking about here is, it, I, in terms of a different way to phrase this, having someone groom you for professional success. That's right. Is that is that really where you're going with this? Is that am I getting the idea of sponsorship? Yes and no, because okay. you, even when we're developing, even if you're a brand new lawyer, I want to groom you for success. But the kind of needs that you have have to do more with basically learning what it means to be great lawyer okay. and how do you run an office or how do you run a practice. But what I'm talking about happens later in your career. It can happen early. Let me just say, we can all use a champion. We can all use an advocate at any point in our career. And, you know, a sponsor is that. But when you, we talk about it in um, the way we do, uh, you know, in, in terms of, of professional development, it becomes more important once you've already established the basics you have the platform, you have the skills. Now what you need is to move up, to move forward. Okay. Um, you know, whether it's within an organization you want to be the president, within a firm you want to be, you know, the biggest rainmaker or the person who runs the place, um, or you just want to get, you know, more money and more clients and be better. Uh, but it's where there are um, fewer slots or fewer resources available and more competition for them right, right. Um, as you move ahead and, and you become more senior, uh, that's when you really start, uh, you know, this becomes more important. But there's no question, we, we could use it from the time you're a kid, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Absolutely, like, yeah, no, I, I, I understand. That, no, I, I see the value of this in, in terms of to the, to the attorney that's being sponsored. I, I, I get that. Um, do you see, what would the value be for a firm to look at this more formal, you know, pivoting into this type of a model? Well, the, the issue is really one about fairness and, uh, and diversity. Okay. The reason this has become so, uh, so central is because when you look at the profession, uh, at the entry level, you have equal numbers of men and women or close to it. And you have fairly good numbers uh, at the entry level of diverse lawyers, people of color and, and people with other uh, uh, characteristics that, that place them in an underrepresented group. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. as you move toward leadership, partnership, uh, you know, seniority, you have fewer and fewer uh, people who are diverse right. and what you have are a lot of straight white men running the world uh, and for firms that are concerned about why they're losing women and minorities um, then you have to take a look at whether sponsorship is happening to you know in a fair way and what the research shows is that women for example get plenty of mentors and most women today, most lawyers, you know, coming into the profession are fairly savvy. They've been told since they were kids the importance of mentoring. So they know to look for mentors. 
And I think people are more conscientious about being mentors. What they're not getting, though, what they find is that women can get mentors, but they don't get sponsored right. because okay. most of the people, one of the, the one of the critical uh, characteristics of a sponsor is it's got to be somebody with some power. Yes. And it's got to be somebody with power, influence, some sort of clout that can help you actually make a move forward or up. Yes. And most of those people are men. And most men sponsor other men. And okay. they don't sponsor women for a whole host of reasons. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's just, okay. you know, they overlook women. Sometimes it's deliberate. They want to avoid women. Today we're having a lot of issues about, you know, men being afraid to be uh too close to women to a woman. Yes, absolutely. I get that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It it's, seems it's, to me too that there's an element here that um when, when you, you, you start talking about some of the work you're doing is uh, succession planning and these kinds of things. It seems to me long-term viability of a firm. A firm would also benefit to to, to have diversity of thought and diversity of client based that that women and and uh, diverse races and whatnot in terms of these kinds of programs. I just think it's going to add to the bottom line the success of a firm overall. Do you think there's anything to that? Absolutely. And okay. there's loads of research yeah. on this. Yeah. Okay. It's, it is, it's, that's, that's one of the reasons why people are concerned about diversity. Right. right. Uh, you know, I think a lot of firms have a superficial interest in it. They need to meet numbers. They need to satisfy right. clients and stuff. <laughs> But I think the the major reason for that is that you need diversity in a whole host of ways uh, to keep the thinking vibrant in an organization. You know, if your firm is only composed of people who were successful 20 years ago and, you know, that's where they learned how to be great lawyers, when you take a look at the profession today, somebody who doesn't have current skills or look at the world in a different way and... Uh, bring new thinking mm -hmm. to the table, uh, you know, a firm is going to stagnate. Right, right. Now, and, and one of the issues, you know, when you look at national data in terms of, you know, the number of lawyers and, and the size of the firms they practice in and these kinds of things, the, the a significant percentage of lawyers practice in the solo and small firm arena. Now, in my years, uh, and I've been at this for 20 years and doing a lot of consulting myself out and all over the country, I, it's, it's been fun and interesting to come across a number of all female firms, as an example, and, and, and smaller firms. And it, it is a different... Uh, uh, just feel, and I, I love to go into these kinds of settings at times. But thinking about that, we have a significant number of women in the solo small firm space. Do you see, you know, can can these women avail themselves of the kinds of uh, opportunities? You know, how does sponsorship play into this space? Uh, can it? Does it? Well, it does um, in a slightly different way, though. Okay. When, when we talk about this, it tends to be within the context of an organization where people are trying to move up within an organization. In a small firm, obviously, um, uh, you don't have a lot of the same dy dynamics. Right. The larger the firm, the more isolated individuals are and the more they need this mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But still... You can't really be successful on your own and in any organization, even, you know, when it's a solo, you still depend on other people and uh, you depend on people sending you business. Uh, you depend on getting your name out there. Uh, that goes back to building a strong network. And within that network, you need people who will be your champions, who will send you uh, referrals uh, who will nominate you for positions in the bar association or some uh, professional organization or business organization that you want to be prominent in. Uh, you know, I know how many lawyers still uh, just graduate law school and hang out a shingle and don't realize how important it is to be connected professionally to other people. Yes, right. And I think the general mentor model is more important because you need somebody who's also going to, you know, help you understand what it means to be a professional and a, uh, 
uh, a valued and trusted advisor and the sorts of things that you may not learn in law school. So the traditional model of mentoring, I think, is more important. But once you're out there and you really, you know, you want to go for it, you want to be the the most successful lawyer in town in your field, you need to have people working with you to help mm-hmm. you. And one of the things that we encourage everyone to do is to have a, a constellation of mentors or they, you know, people right. call it things like a personal board of advisors because, you know, one mentor isn't enough anyway. Yes. Uh, some mentors are really great at some things, but not at others. And so as you go through your career, there may be many different ways that someone can be helpful to you. Yes. And that you and, and, you know, keep in mind, this is a very, very much a reciprocal practice. And when I talk about mentoring, I emphasize the collaborative and reciprocal nature. This is not a gimme, gimme, gimme. Uh, this is a practice. And the people who have have really good mentors tend to also be generous with their time right, and right. Ben- and they mentor and support other people. That's a big part of this. Uh, but the, the, the advocacy role that a sponsor plays, it is important, but um, it happens again later in your career. And yes. when you're starting to think about positions within the community or within an organization of some sort, right. I think that's what is more important. Yes, uh, excellent, excellent points. And I really like this one in terms of multiple mentors. I, I think so many people you know, sort of go out and try to find one, and we call it good. And, and that's no, no. I, Ida, this has just been uh, wonderful. I, I love the work that you're doing, and I love hearing your thoughts. If any of our listen, listeners were interested in finding out a little bit more, um, is, is how can they find out more? Do you have an email? Do you want to share a book material? out I'm happy to give you a moment to how can they contact you well I have a website um, idaabbott.com okay um, and uh, my email address is idaabbott at aol.com uh, so that's pretty easy there's a lot of material on my website that they can download in my newsletters and articles um, I've written several books and the two that might interest your listeners in terms of, of our topic One is called Sponsoring Women, What Men Need to Know. Uh, And the other one is coming out next week, actually. Oh, exciting. It's it's a a totally updated uh, version of my first book. It's it's The Lawyer's Guide to Mentoring, and this is the second edition. Um, It's both of them. uh, Well, the publisher of the mentoring book is NALP, and that, as I say, will be available in another week or two. But... Uh, that'll be on the NALP website and in their bookstore and also on my website at some point right after that. And the sponsorship book is published by attorneyatwork.com, uh, I think. Uh, and it, there's a link to that on my website as well. Very well. I, I think I, I'm going to need to take a look at more in depth of these. I'm looking forward to, to reading this. Uh, I, I really want to Take a look at this one just coming out. Sounds exciting. Uh, to my listeners, uh, I, I hope you found something of value today. It's certainly a pleasure. And Ida, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, if any of you listening uh, have topics of interest that you'd like to hear us talk about in future, please don't hesitate to reach out at me here at Alps. My email address is mbass, the letter M B A S S, at alpsnet.com. That's it. Thanks for listening. And thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you, Ida.